Hello and welcome to this video on factorising using common factors, otherwise known as factorising into a single bracket. Now let's suppose we had the number 8 and I asked you for the factors of 8. Well you might say for example 2 and 4 are factors and we could write 8 as the product of 4 and 2. And we say it's factorised, this, it's factorised if it's a product of numbers. Remember, product means you're timesing the numbers together. A product of numbers. And the same applies in algebra. Let's just say I had x brackets x plus 1. We know from previous videos that this is a product of two things. When you have the two things x to each other, it x means times x plus 1. And we say this is factorised as it's a product of algebraic terms, yeah? However, if we had, say, something like um, x times y plus 3 plus 2, although this bit here is factorised, the x times the y plus 3, that's a product of things, that bit's factorised. Overall, this is an addition because we've got x times x plus 3 plus 2. So overall, the expression is an addition and that is not factorised. We wouldn't say that is factorised. Factorization can also be thought of as the opposite of expansion. So if, say, we had 2 times x plus 3, then if we were to expand that, we saw in the previous video that we do the 2 times the x, which is 2x, and we do the 2 times the 3, which is 6. So that's known as expanding. But if we want to do the opposite, we want to factorise this, what we do is we say, well, is there anything that's common to both this term and this term? So what is common? Well, they both have a factor of 2 in common. This is 2 times something, it's 2 times x. And this has a factor of 2 as well, it's 2 times 3, isn't it? So what we do is we initially have the 2 outside a bracket and then put a bracket after it. And then what we do is to say, well, 2 times what would have given you 2x? So we kind of think of the opposite of expanding. Well, 2 times x would give you 2x. And 2 times what would have given you 6? Well, it's 2 times 3. And we would get that as the factorisation. So this is factorising. Now let's do some further examples. We've got 3x plus 12. So as before, we consider what is common to both of these terms. Well, they both have a factor of 3. This is 3 times something, it's 3 times x. And this has a factor of 3. 12 has a factor of 3, it's 3 times 4. So what we do is we take the 3 out, we factorise out the 3, and then we put a bracket after it. And then we just think of the opposite of expansion. So 3 times what would have given you 3x? Well, it's 3 times x gives you 3x. And 3 times what would have given you plus 12, where it's plus 4. 3 times 4 gives you 12. And we've got our factorised expression because it's a product of things. Let's do another example. We've got x squared minus 2x. Now, what's common to this and this? Well, they both have an x in common. This is x times x, and this is minus 2 times x. They both have x in common, and so we can take the x out of the brackets, and then we think, well, x times what gives you x squared? Well, it's x times x would give you x squared, would expand to give x squared. And x times what would give you minus 2x? Well, it's x times minus 2 would give you minus 2x. And we've got the complete factorisation there. Let's do a few further examples. We've got 4y squared plus 2y. Now, this is starting to get a bit harder now because not only do we have numbers which are common to both, but we also have variables as well. So let's start with the numbers first. What number is common to 4 and to 2? Well, 2 is a factor of both 4 and 2. So we're effectively finding the highest common factor of these numbers. The highest common factor is 2. Now, if I was to write 2 and then put a bracket and then say, well, 2 times what is 4y squared? Well, it's 2y squared and I said 2 times what is 2y, where well, it's y. Although that indeed does expand to give that, we wouldn't say this is a complete a full version of that because there's still stuff that we can take out of it. So for the expression to be fully factorised, you have to make sure you take out every factor that you can. 
So let's look at the variables as well. We've got y squared and y. What do they both have in common? Well, they have a y in common. So let's put that, and now we can have our bracket. So 2y times what would give you 4y squared? Well, 2 times 2 gives you 4, so let's put the 2 there. And y times what gives you the y squared? Well, it's y. 2y times 2y would give you 4y squared. And what about the 2y? 2y times by what gives you 2y? Now, some students get confused at this point and think it might be 0 because, well, we've taken the 2y away from 2y and it's 0. But we're not taking away 2y from 2y. We're factorising it out. We think 2y times what gives you 2y. Well, it's 1, isn't it? 2y multiplied by 1, anything multiplied by 1 gives itself. So it would be 1. And that is our full factorisation. And now a slightly harder one. We've got x squared y squared plus xy squared minus 2xy. Now let's see what's common to all three of these things. Well, we've got uh, an x common to all of these, so let's take the x out. We've also got uh, a y common to all of them. That's got y squared and that's got y squared, but that's only got a y. So y is common to all of them. And then let's do our bracket. Now, xy times what gives you x squared, y squared? Well, x times x would give you that x squared. And y times another y would give you that y squared. So it's xy times xy. xy times what gives you xy squared? Well, we've already got the x here. So we don't need to times the x by something. But we need to times the y by additional y to get the xy squared. So it's xy times y would give you xy squared. And then finally, xy times what is minus 2xy? Well, we just need to multiply by minus 2 because we've already got an x set, we've already got a y there. Now let's do some test your understanding questions. I want you to factorise 8xy minus 12y. And I want you to factorise 10x cubed y plus 15x squared y. You may want to pause the video now to have a go at that. Right, let's look at the numbers first. What is the highest common factor of 8 and 12? Well, it's 4, isn't it? So we're going to take a 4 out, and then we need to look at the variables. Do these both have an x in common? No, so we can't factorise that out. But they do have a y in common, so we're going to take out the y, and then we do our bracket. And then 4y times what gives you 8xy? Let's think about the numbers first. Well, 4 times 2 would give you 8. And then we've already got a y here, but what do we need x? We need to times by an x, don't we? So when we times these together, we'll have the x and the y, and the 2 times 4 is 8, so it will give us that. Now, 4y times what gives you minus 12y? Well, we've already got the y there, but 4 times what gives you minus 12? Well, it's minus 3. 4y times minus 3 would give you minus 12. And that is the complete factorization. Now, this one's a bit harder. Let's think, what's the highest common factor of 10 and 15? We always start with the numbers first. Well, the highest common factor is 5, so we're going to take out 5. And then let's look at the variables. x cubed and x squared have what in common? Well, they actually have x squared in common. This is x times x times x, and this is x times x. They have two x's in common, so we can factorise x squared out. And then y's, do they have any y stuff in common? Yes, they've got a y in common, so we factorise that out and then we do our bracket as before. Now, 5x squared y multiplied by what will give you this? Well, we need a 2, don't we? Because 5 times 2 gives you 10. Now, we've got x squared, but we want x cubed, so we need to times by an additional x. And we don't need to multiply by y. There's a y there. Now, let's look at this second thing here. 5 times what will give you the 15? Well, we need a 3. And then... Do we need to times the x squared y by anything to get x squared y? No, we don't. So it's just 2x plus 3. And we are done.